So I was talking about what happens when the angle is 90 degrees, then we say the derivative does not exist. That means we can't really find the instantaneous rate of change. Okay. Or if, if you are asked to find the derivative, you'll say the derivative does not exist. And why is that? Can anyone tell me any you know, reason out of your head? Is it because the tangent of 90 is undefined? Very good. Yep, exactly. Excellent. So since we are, you know, we have seen what the um, tangent values gives us. I mean, if we, if we pick up an angle, uh, we, we try to find the corresponding tangent value of that. And then we, we concluded that it's positive, it's negative, or it's zero, something like that. So if we do the same for tangent of 90 degrees, we can, we can then understand what's happening because tangent of 90 degrees uh, cannot be determined, right? So we say that it's, uh, it's the, I mean, at that point, the derivative can't uh, be found or we can't determine the derivative. Okay, it does not exist or anything like that, whatever uh, you feel like writing. As long as it's mathematically right, that should be fine. Okay, let's move on. Uh, this is the definition. We have already seen this in 3.1. Uh, okay, yeah. Now let's to, let, uh, take a look at another graph. So let's say we have a graph, negative x squared plus six x, which is this one, a blackish one, okay? This is the derivative of, uh, this is the function. And we want to calculate the derivative at different points. Obviously it will be given um, which points you are asked to find derivative at, okay? Now let's say, uh, I, I'm, I'm telling you that find the derivative of this function at one, at the point one, okay? Okay, now this is one, and if you go straight up, this is the corresponding functional value on the graph. So we, we want to find the tangent, or so uh, I apologize. We want to find the derivative at that point, right? So what we do, we draw a tangent line, which touches that point, but not uh, intersects the graph. So if you can draw that, and if you can extend it to the x-axis like this, can you see the angle is less than 90 degrees? You can just eyeball it. You don't need to draw any graph though. You can just draw an imaginary line on your, uh, uh, in, uh, and try to visualize that the angle it's creating with the x-axis. Or if you are confused, you can uh, extend this line on the, on the uh, x-axis and you'll see the angle is less than 90 degrees. So I can, clearly conclude that it has to be positive, okay? And let's say I know how to find the derivative or the derivative is also given for some reasons, I can actually cross check it by plugging in the value. So if I plug in, so this is the derivative of x, or negative x squared plus six x, if I plug in one in place of x, let's see what happens. Negative two times one plus six. So that means negative two plus six, which is four. And it is positive as we assumed. Do you agree? Whatever you have graphically, your algebraic calculation has to satisfy that. You can't have two different things, you know, 
if you do it graphically, if you if you get something positive, obviously we didn't calculate the value graphically here, but we, we definitely know even by eyeballing that the derivative will be positive. But for some reasons, if you do that algebraically and find it, find a negative value, then you can actually cross check your work. You, you should cross check your work because something uh, is definitely wrong in any of the calculation, either it's the graphical one or the algebraic one, but you can't have two different conclusions, right? Those have to match with each other. So this is telling you the same thing, basically. Let's try uh, uh, on the peak point, okay? If you draw a straight line, you will see that it's parallel to the x-axis. And it, whenever you get a parallel line to the x-axis, even without uh, wasting a second, uh, you can conclude the derivative will be zero at that point, okay? And let's, let's verify that as well. So if we plug in three here in the derivative, it's negative two times three plus six, that means it's negative six plus six, which is zero, which is also true when we, when we did it graphically. And same goes for the other values as well. Any question from this? This is the basic idea. So um, um, it, it might look pretty obvious, uh, but uh, you will definitely see uh, more complicated problems, especially uh, when you need to solve it algebraically, okay? But again, you'll need the concept, that's for sure. No questions at all? Perfect, let's move on. So let's see if they have any formula for it or any example of it. Not, not as of now, okay. Now, we want to define it uh, in, in another way. We want to see, um, can we rewrite it um, using another notation? And the answer is affirmative. Yes, we can. So we know that, I mean, we define the function as y equals to, y equals to f of x, right? So the difference of the y values can be rewritten as this, can be rewritten as this. Now, where have you seen this? I mean, I'm talking about the right-hand side of this. Where have you seen this? Where have you seen something similar uh, to this? Isn't that the, uh, like the derivative form that we just written down? Written down where? Oh, no, for the tangent line equation. Okay, yeah, exactly. So that's the one, right? This, this f of x plus h minus f of x is basically the same thing. Because if you remember, this h was the difference between these two points, x and x plus h, right? It, it was the difference between these two points. Uh, I think I showed it in my tab. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I, I did show it on my iPad. Yeah, so this is the, this H is the difference between these points X and X plus H. So this del X is actually the same. Del X means the difference between two X's. That means you might say this is, another way of writing h. So this right-hand side is nothing but this thing. 
it's, it's exactly the same, okay? Instead of H, we want to write it precise, more precisely, I would say, because H was definitely the difference between those two. So we, you know, in maths and in, in physics, we write difference of two things by this delta. This delta will always signify where even, even um, in chemistry, I guess, if I'm not wrong, in, in most uh, 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 science, you know, most, most of the courses from, from science background, uh, uh, I think use the same notation as this. It's the delta. Del, I guess, yeah. It's a Greek letter, if I'm not wrong. It signifies the difference. Whichever it's, uh, uh, it's been assigned to, it, it signifies the difference of um, two values of the same thing, okay? So this del x means uh, the difference of two x values, okay? Okay, so if that's the del y, I mean, we can uh, denote it by del y. That means the difference of y values. And can we do that? And the answer is yes, this is a y value. This is a functional value. This is also, also a functional value. So the difference of two functional values can be written as del, del y, right? Because I, we have said that y is the function. So we can replace this by del y, right? And we already know that h is the difference of two x's. That means it's actually del x. So we can rewrite it as del y over del x. And obviously it was h tends to zero. Instead we can write del x tends to zero. Don't look at the third part of it. Just look at the middle part. Do you agree with me? I'm just rewriting it, nothing else. I, I haven't done anything at all. I haven't changed any calculation or anything. I, I'm just rewriting it. Do you agree? Yeah, that's pretty simple right there. Yeah. Okay, so if you agree with me, now we can actually go for further refinement. We can actually um, do more simplif simplification of it. So whenever you get a format like this, where you are finding the ratio of the functional, uh, difference of the functional value and the difference of the X values, when the difference is uh, really, really small, it, it's going close to zero, it, it's approaching, approaching to zero, then instead of writing this big equation or expression, I would say, <coughs> excuse me, we can rewrite it as dy over dx. This dy over dx signifies two things. First of all, we are finding the derivative of y in terms of x, <clears throat> excuse me. So instead of f prime x, we can often uh, write dy dx or e even in the question, you will see some questions will have f prime x, some question will find, uh, uh, some question will say find dy dx. So it will actually mean the same thing. That means find the derivative of the y function in terms of x. We'll see examples of it, as I said, but we're trying to see um, uh, how, it's, uh, how it works algebraically first, or rather, the, or rather graphically first, and then we'll see the algebraic approach as well. So whenever you see dy dx, you'll straight away, uh, see that you are asked to find the derivative of what? Of y in terms of x. Now, why am I repeating this word in terms of x? Uh, so this is really important because for a particular function, 
you can you can actually have different derivatives considering if you are considering different um, variables if you find the derivative of this particular function y in terms of any other variable then you will get you'll, you might get a different result for example if you find the derivative of y in terms of y, you'll get one because there will be no change, no instantaneous change. Again, we'll see the algebra algebraic approach soon and it will make more sense. But yeah, now, um, from now on, we'll, we'll be using either f prime x or dy dx. We say this as dy dx. It's not dy over dx, okay? It, it's not exactly the ratio. It's, it doesn't work like that. It's not exactly the ratio of two things. Instead, uh, this is the derivative of y in terms of x. So it actually is a different thing. We're not really dividing dy by dx, okay? And you will soon see why. Um, but again, we first need to see the algebraic, uh, rather the graphical representation of it. Okay, again, the graph, uh, the graph, uh, the graphs. I think we have already discussed it. But let me see if we if we can generate a question from this. Uh, Okay, so f has a slope of negative one. Positive one, okay, yeah. So if a graph like this is given, okay, what we can do, we can, we can find uh, what's happening with the slope, okay? So, for example, for this graph, obviously uh, we, we, can, uh, we can find the sign, that means whether it's positive, negative, or zero. So if you draw a, a tangent line on this side of the curve or, or this side of the graph, um, if we can extend it to the x-axis, we'll see that it's actually, um, greater than 90 degrees, it's creating an angle greater than 90 degrees, right? So that means we can say the derivative will be negative. That's for sure, okay? And if we can draw a tangent line here at any point, and if, if we extend it, you will see that we have um, an angle with x-axis which is less than 90 degrees. So it will be something positive. We still don't know what it will, it will be, but it will definitely be positive, right? Okay, and same goes for the right side uh, of the right part of the graph as well. So if you can draw a tangent line, uh, it will, uh, create an angle of more than 90 degrees, so it will be definitely negative. Now, the question is, can we calculate the value of it? Can we do that? Anyone? I mean, from the graph, can you calculate the uh, derivative? Would you... Could you use the, um, the slope of it? I don't know, maybe. Okay, and how do you think that we can- Of the original part? And how, how can we um, use the slope here on the graph? Since the derivative is, um, I guess the limit as the change in x goes to zero over, I guess the slope, if that makes sense. Okay, so for example, 
um, you know, if you, if you can see the uh, end of the slide, end part of the slide, they're saying that from negative two to onwards uh, on, on our left, it has a slope negative one. My question is, can we, can we get it from the graph? I mean, obviously we can draw a tangent line, but we can't do it uh, on an online platform, can we? So the only thing you can do from the graph is to eyeball it. So without wasting any more time, let me tell you, why can we conclude at least for these two, if not the other one? Uh, the calculating the other one could be could be difficult, but if you if you if you have anything like this, these two parts, we can actually eyeball uh, the slope. I'll I'll not be giving you this type of questions anyway because this doesn't really make sense. Uh, but yeah, uh, we can actually eyeball it from the graph. Let me tell you why. So if you can see this part of these two parts of the graph is actually going exactly through the middle. I mean, the diagonal, diagonal, I should say, diagonal and the anti-diagonal of the square you have. Can you see that? If you consider each square, you'll see the line is exactly going through the middle, the uh, diagonally. Can you see that? That means it's actually creating uh, two equal halves of this square. Can you see that? For the entire uh, graph from, from here to here. Do you agree? That's the first question. Just eyeball it. Yes. So that means for these two graphs, if you, if you can extend it to the x-axis, it will create I mean, for this one, it will be exactly 45 degrees because it's exactly half. It's creating equal, two equal halves of this uh, square. It's like creating two sandwiches from a squared bread. So if you can extend it, it will, it will create a 45 degree angle, angle with the x-axis. And what's the value of tangent of 45? Anyone? Is that one? One, one. exactly, yep. That's why even though it don't have any precise uh, value here or we can't really generate too much information from it, we can just eyeball and say, hey, hey, for this part from, um, zero to negative two for this particular part, the function has a slope of positive one. The first derivative will be one. Do you agree? Yeah. Same goes for this one. If you can extend it to the x-axis, it will create 135 degrees. That means 90 plus 30, uh, 45, okay? And the tangent value of it will be negative one. So we can say that it will have a negative a one everywhere starting from negative two to, um, I guess we have defined it to negative five. Yeah, it looks like negative five. Anyway, I'll, I'll not give you a question like this. Uh, at least uh, I'll try, uh, I'm planning to avoid because again, it doesn't really make sense. If you know the concept, and if you can solve it algebraically, or if you can draw conclusions from the graph, that should be that should be the thing I'm, I'll I'll be looking for. Okay. All right. Let's move on. I think we have discussed most parts of this graph. Let me see if we can generate any question from this. Uh, 
Okay, do you have any question from this graph? Take your time because I think uh, I have already discussed uh, these things uh, in the previous graphs. This is just another example. Take your time and see if you have any questions. I'm looking at that bottom right one, and I think it's supposed to be going off these shaded parts up above that still says positive negative slopes. Isn't that far left one part of the red graph? Shouldn't that be a negative slope right there? Uh, okay, so could you please repeat it? which part again on the red red graph? Yeah, that far left section of that graph under the positive slope, shouldn't that be negative right there considering? Or is it because it's technically above the... Um, it's above zero in this case. So this part on, on yeah. my left? Okay, okay. So um, if you can draw a tangent line for this part, okay, so um, let's, let's try to draw it here maybe. You can draw a tangent line here. Uh, yeah, looks to me negative as well. You're right. It looks negative to me as well. Okay, I just wanted to see if like that was yeah. wrong from your opinion, but all right. Yeah, it, I guess. Uh, uh, let me see. Da -da -da. Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, I think it should be negative. I think they have slightly um, made, made a mistake here. Yeah, I agree. I'll, I'll, I'll recheck it, okay? But yeah, I'll definitely, uh, definitely looks to me you know, just by eyeballing that it should be negative. All right, any other questions? All right, so let's move on then. Okay, that's an interesting one. Yeah. But again, if you if you can see a graph like this, uh, the best way to find the slope of uh, this type of graph is to uh, hold a uh, pull something really straight. Let's a pen on a on a point, and just see which angle it's creating uh, with the x-axis. Okay, so if you can hold a pen here at this particular point, okay, you can just touch it. You you can't really cross the uh, graph or rather the curve. Uh, if you can just touch that point, if you can hold a pen at that point like that, and then you can just see what kind of angle it's creating with the x-axis, okay? Again, I'll not give you any, any question like this because you can, you, can, you can just eyeball it. You don't need any, any hard and fast uh, calculation for it. You can just eyeball it. Even at this place, any any part of the graph, you can see. For example, at this part, if if we can draw a tangent line, I can clearly assume it will go like this, right? And it will create uh, an angle definitely more than ninety degrees. So at that at this particular point, the tangent will be negative, right? So you can work like that. Yeah, here you go. You can see. The slope is negative at that point, right? So what you can do, you can find the intervals. Where is the slope negative and where is the slope positive? 
you can you can look for the intervals okay and you can you can just eyeball it from the graph it will not be precise maybe because uh, uh, it's it's a it's a graph you don't have any um, or you don't have precise information and that's why i'm saying keep saying that that i'll, I'll avoid this type of questions but yeah uh, if you know this, uh, if you know how does this work, that should be fine. You don't need anything else. Any question from this one? No questions at all? Okay. Now, now we want to see what's the relation between uh, differentiability and continuity. We have already seen how to check continuity at a point. Now we want to see what does it mean uh, if we say that a function is differentiable and what's the relation um, between uh, continuity and differentiability. So if we can find a derivative, if we can find derivative of a function at a point, we say that the function is differentiable at that point. So theorem 3.1 says, if a function is differentiable at a point, then it's definitely going to be continuous at that point. Okay, so whenever you see a function is differentiable at a certain point, and if the question asks you, hey, can you, can you uh, check the continuity of this function at that point? So without doing anything, you can straight away say, yes, the function will certainly be continuous at that point. Okay. This is what the theorem says. And why do you think this is true graphically? Let me show you, uh, let me show you a graph here. Let, let, let us try with this graph. Why do you think this theorem should be true? Can you relate anything from the graph? Let's, let's try this particular point, which we have already seen. At this point, there is a negative slope. That means the derivative exists, right? At this point, the derivative exists. So the theorem says the function is continuous at, at this point. The theorem says it. So if, if, um, if you eyeball it, do you think that this function is continuous at this point? If yes, why? If no, again, why? You don't need to trust anything. You can just cross check your work, right? How many of you think that it's continuous at this point, this graph? It's continuous at this point. You can give me a thumbs up. Only one of you? What about the rest? Two? Okay. The rest of you think that it's not continuous or you are confused? Can you please unmute yourself if you are asking any question? I can't really hear you. Oh gosh, is anyone trying to say anything? Is it is it not continuous because much like a limit, the it has differing in the limits, so it's negative infinity and infinity. So would that make it not continuous at this point? Uh, at this point, I don't think the limit is negative and positive infinity. 
again, we are talking about a certain point. We're not talking about the entire function. If you remember, we did see the continuity of a function. We, we, we saw the continuity of a function at a point. We saw the continuity of a function on an interval. So these are different things. A function could be um, continuous on an interval, but it, could, it, it may be not continuous everywhere. Or it could be continuous at a point, but maybe it could, could be discontinuous on, that, on, a, on a certain interval, including that point. So these are, these are different things, to be honest. So if you just consider this point, is it continuous? Yes. And why? Because it's differentiable? No, no. So you're telling me uh, uh, that uh, the theorem says uh, since it's differentiable, uh, I mean, since we have a derivative, then it has to be continuous. But I'm actually doing it in the opposite way. So my question is, why do you think the uh, theorem holds? I mean, why is this continuous? Since it has a derivative, I know that it has to be continuous using that theorem, but how can I conclude that using this graph? Let's say I don't trust, I don't trust him. I, I want to cross check that it actually holds. So I want, to, I want to check that it's actually continuous at this point. So let's do it this way. We know to check the continuity, we, we first need to see whether there is a defined value at this point. Is there a defined value at this point? Yeah, there's no holes in the graph. Very good. The next thing we need to check whether the left-sided and the right-sided limit give us the same value. Okay, if we approach from the left, it's taking us here. If we approach from the right, it's taking us here. So it's actually giving, uh, taking us to the same place. So then we, we can say the limit exists. The next thing we need to check is whether the limit at that point and the functional value at that point is the same or not. And the answer is yes again. At this particular point, this is the functional value and the limit at that point also takes us there. So it satisfies all the criteria of being continuous. So that means there is continuity at that point. In other words, we, we can say the theorem actually holds. And you can try anything, uh, any point rather, on the graph, on any graph. If you, if you can find a derivative at, at a point, at a particular point, on that particular point, the function will be continuous. And you can check it this way. We need to see whether there is a defined value, then you need to find the limit at that point if it exists, and then you, you, you will see that those two values actually match with each other. Any question from this? No questions at all? Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we want to see the uh, contrapositive uh, statement of that. So if we know that if we can find a derivative at a point, that means if a function is differentiable at a point, then it's continuous. Uh, at that particular point. Or the contrapositive statement is if a function is not continuous at a point, then it can't be differentiable there. 
okay? So if you, if you can see a graph and at a, at a particular point, if it's not continuous, that means if there is a hole, there's a break or something like that, there's an asymptote, if the function is not continuous at that point, then it will not be differentiable either. You will see that there is no, uh, you, you can't find a derivative there. Okay, it's, the, it's, it's actually the contrapositive statement, nothing else. Let's see that uh, example of this. So first of all, at A, the first question is at A, is the function continuous? And the answer is no, right? Because you can see there is a hole here. We, we do have a defined value though, but we have a hole and this clearly means our left-sided and right-sided limit is not the same. We do have, a, we do have two different values for the left and right-sided limits, right? So this function is not differentiable at A, or rather uh, it's not continuous at A. So using this theorem, uh, the alternative statement, we can say that it will not be differentiable at A. That means we can't really find a derivative at A. And can you eyeball it from the graph as well? And the answer is yes. Where do you think we should draw a tangent line? We can't really draw a tangent line here, right? Do you agree? Yes, B. Yes. So, so if it's not differentiable at that point, if you moved A over, could you still differentiate the equation then? Uh, what do you mean by A over? So say A wasn't that point right there on the X axis. It wasn't this, A was not this value. Say A was two less. Here? Could, yes. And yeah, definitely, definitely. It, okay. it, would be, it would be differentiable because if you take a point here, then at that point, the function is continuous, no doubt on that. So it will be differentiable. Yeah, good question. Very good. If you ask questions like this, you'll see uh, the uh, things will be much, much more uh, convincing to you, okay? So whenever you're practicing, um, I mean, whenever you are doing the homework problems, try to ask questions first, then look for the solution. It will, it will definitely be helpful, okay? All right, uh, and, and the good thing is I actually went over the grade book last night as well. So the class average is, I guess, 91%, which is really amazing. I can see the hard work you are putting behind this. So keep doing that. We're still in the early days, but keep doing that. I'll, um, I'll be more than happy to help if I can do any, okay? All right, so let's move on. Is this the same graph? Yeah, the same graph, I guess. Uh, it's a mistake, 3.24, yeah. All right, not continuous implies not differentiable. We have seen this as well, right? Yeah, we have seen this as well. The next one, okay. What does this give us? Okay, so this is another graph uh, we want to we want to uh, use to see uh, how the theorem works. Okay. All right. So let's say we have a, a function y equals f of x, and at part at a particular point a, we want to find uh, the derivative. Okay. So this is the point A, and if you go straight up to this, 
at this particular point, we want to find the derivative. Okay. Now, since the graph has two parts, I mean, this A is actually joining the two parts. Okay. This, this A, the corresponding value at A is uh, joining the two parts of the function. Okay. We don't have a hole or a break though, but it's actually connecting the two parts of the graph. Now, how can we find the derivative at that point? So we know that if the function is not continuous at a point, then it can't be differentiable. But I can see at A, the function is definitely continuous. Do you agree? Don't uh, think uh, too far right now. Just try to see whether it's continuous at a point or not. Do you agree that this is actually continuous at A? Yeah, there's no holes at that particular point and there's a defined value. Right, so at A, the function is continuous, but the interesting thing here, did the theorem say, did the theorem, any version of the theorem say that if a function is, is continuous at a point, it will be differentiable at, at that point? Did the theorem say anything like that? Let me show you the statement again. So the first statement says, if it's differentiable, then it's definitely continuous. The other statement says, if it's not continuous, then it's definitely not differentiable. But what if I say, that the function is continuous. Is there any way or other, is the statement trying to imply that it, it will be differentiable? Is there any clear cut uh, indication of that? Anyone? And the answer is no, right? Because again, let me re, uh, let me uh, say the statements again, reiterate it again. So the first one says, if it's differentiable, then it's continuous. That means we already know that it's differentiable. Second one says, if it's not continuous, then it's not differentiable. That means the function is not continuous. But now on our hand, we, we are trying to find the differentiability where the function is continuous. So if that's the case, uh, we can say that we can't conclude straight away. That means if the function is continuous, we might see that it's still not differentiable. In some cases, it will be differentiable in some cases, it will not. So that means we need further investigation to do. When the function is continuous, that's fine. But to, to, uh, for it to be differentiable, we need further categories to satisfy. And this is, sorry, not this one. Where are the categories? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think this one, yeah. So we need to see this criteria. Okay. Now, if the function is not differentiable, then at least one of these will be true. Let's see the conditions. The function is not continuous. 
obviously we know that from the statement that if the function is not continuous, it can't be differentiable, uh, then uh, it definitely is the contrapositive statement of that theorem. The next one is f has a corner. Okay, so this is what we have here. This is actually a corner point. Do you agree? If the yeah. point at which you are trying to find differentiability, if the point is a corner point, then it's not differentiable. And you can see here this statement, f prime a does not exist. Even though the function is continuous at this point, the function is not differentiable. That means whenever you see a corner point, or in other words, if you draw tangent lines, again, since, since it's joining two, two parts of the graph, that means it's a corner point, you can actually draw uh, two tangent lines there. And we know that at a particular point, we can actually draw one tangent line. That means if we can draw two tangent lines uh, at that point, this means we don't have a derivative at that point. Okay, and that's true for any corner points. So that's the second one, f has a corner, or in other words, it's, it will be the joining point of two, uh, two parts of the function. It will be the junction, okay? And last but not the least, f has a vertical tangent. What does that mean? The vertical tangent is the one I talked about when my microphone um, got muted for some reason, if you remember. That means when you draw a tangent line, it creates an angle of 90 degrees. Okay. For example, if you take a look at these two graphs, if you draw a tangent line at zero at this particular point or at this particular point, it will, it, you will see it will actually go straight like this it will create an angle of 90 degrees, okay, for either of the graphs. And we know tangent of 90 degrees, uh, we, we can't really find the value of that. So if we have a vertical tangent line like this, then at that point, the derivative does not exist. Okay, any question from this? Any question? Um, I just have one clarifying question about the corner rule. Yeah. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to come to a corner at 90 degrees, just as long as they like touch and make any type of corner. Right, and yeah. that rule definitely. applies. Yeah. Of course. Okay, cool, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let, let's take a look, quick look at this graph and then we'll wrap it up. So if we have a graph like this, uh, you will you will be given you will be given a graph like this, and you will be asked to find differentiability at some particular points. For example, you'll be asked to find the differentiability at negative two, at zero, at positive two. So, can anyone quickly tell me whether it's differentiable at negative two, and what's the reason behind that? No, because there's a hole at the at that particular point in the graph and it's not continuous. Exactly. So at negative two, the graph is not continuous. So I can straight away say, hey, that it's not differentiable. What happens at zero? It's a corner or it's, there's a tangent there, I mean. It's, it's a tangent line. Uh, it's a vertical tangent line. And what does it mean? Uh, tangent has a 90 degree angle. 
no, I mean, what, what does it give us in terms of differentiability? Oh, it can't be, I can't, I can't say that word. It, it is not differentiable, yeah, you are right. And same goes for positive two as well, right? We have a hole here, so it, it's not continuous at that point. So we will say it's not differentiable at that point. Okay, let's wrap it up here. Tomorrow, I want you guys to go over 3.3. And we'll do lots of lots of problems, uh, algebraic uh, way uh, uh, to find derivatives. Okay. All right. So I'll see you tomorrow. Take care and prepare, or rather, start doing the homework assignments. Okay. <laughs>